Howdy partners. Welcome back to the King of Camo channel. I'm Nate and today we will be restoring this rusted, beat up Smith & Wesson Model 28 revolver. A customer brought this in and it has sentimental value. We're gonna turn it into a sexy beast. Stay tuned. You might recognize this iconic revolver from movies such as Bad Boys, Beverly Hills Cop, and The Godfather. Let's take a minute to talk about its history. Originally designed as an end frame revolver back in the 1930s, the Smith & Wesson Model 28 was a less expensive version of the Model 27 being produced at the time. The main differences between the Model 27 and the Model 28 was that the Model 28 had a sandblasted finish instead of being polished and a two dot rear sight instead of the adjustable three dot rear sight as featured on the Model 27. The Model 28, also known as the Highway Patrolman, was used in police departments around the United States throughout the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Though it was chambered in 357 Magnum, it could also run 38 Special and due to the weight of the frame, the recoil was heavily mitigated making it not only desirable for law enforcement, but civilians alike. This six shooter saw steady sales while in production and became a highly desired gun for self-defense, competition, and target practice. While we were talking about the history of this firearm, Billy went ahead and disassembled it for us. And you can see there is a little bit of rust buildup on the internals, as well as on the front sight here. And this is pretty typical of what we see in Georgia due to the high humidity. Moisture can get inside of your safe and build up on your firearm and cause the surface pitting and rusting. Now the front sight here has some deep pitting. We're gonna fill that and hand sand it back down on the back end, as well as sandblast this frame to remove any of the additional rust that you see. The cylinder has a little bit of surface pitting but that sandblasting we just mentioned is gonna take care of all of it. Some of these other pieces aren't so rusted, but they are full of carbon and grime. The side plate seen better days. It does have some surface corrosion, but we're gonna take care of that pretty easily when we sandblast and recoat it. The customer requested that we paint the hammer and the trigger and swap out the grips with some newer rubberized hoe grips so that he can get a better purchase on the gun. So now that we have it disassembled, let's take it over to the ultrasonic cleaner and get it cleaned up. This is our ultrasonic cleaner and in it we have industrial strength simple green that we are heating up and running on a timer. First we'll put in all the small parts and degrease them and once they're done we'll put the revolver in there and get it cleaned up. What you'll notice is that the ultrasonic cleaner does a great job at cleaning the firearm surface rust on the front sight, on the cylinder, and on the frame. But we still need to take this to the blast cabinet, so we'll do that now. Now that the firearm is blasted, you can see that overall it looks pretty good. There's a few trouble spots and it's really just on the front sight so we're gonna get Billy to fill this and hand sand it back down while I prep other parts for paint. For this project, the customer has selected a primary color of World War II OD green and matte black. So let's get these mixed up. Now it's important to mix up your paints really well. Spend about two to three minutes mixing them up before you add the hardener. When I add hardener, I always use a glass stirring rod. I mix for about a minute, let it sit for a minute, and mix for another minute. This will ensure consistency in your coating. Now I've been yelled at for not wearing my mask before. You do wanna wear a mask, so let's go ahead and put that on and get started. What you'll notice here is that I am laying on this primary coat rather wet and thick and that's because we want a good base coat. Now, it can be difficult if you're first starting off learning how to do this, but there are a few tips and pointers that I'm about to give you that will help you get better. The first thing you wanna do 
is make sure that you overlap the part. Don't start spraying on the barrel, but start spraying before it and then past it before you release the nozzle on the spray gun. The other thing you want to make sure of is that you keep an equidistance from the part as you're spraying. This will keep you from making streaks and having splotches that look wetter than other areas. As you coat this firearm, take your time, make sure you get into all the little nooks and crannies so that all of the metal is covered. All right, this revolver goes into the oven and now let's start with the accessories. So all the accessories are gonna be black. And as you can see here, I'm overlapping the part, spraying it nice and wet. But because this cylinder is a high use part, we're gonna give it an extra little dusting to ensure that the coating stays on for a long time. Everything in the oven. All right, now that these parts are cured, Billy is going to reassemble the firearm for us. Enjoy this time-lapse goodness. All right, folks, here we are with the finished Model 28 Highway Patrolman that Billy just reassembled. Two-tone, OD green, and matte black, and I think it looks absolutely amazing. Now, we did a couple of things to improve this firearm. The first thing we did was replace the wooden grips with some Hogue rubber grips. That gets you a better purchase on the firearm. We also removed any pitting that may have occurred from rusting, hand sanded it down so that it's flush with the firearm. And we also added a white stripe on the front sight so that target acquisition would be significantly easier. Overall, I think it turned out amazing. I do want to take a second to talk to you about the difference between preservation and restoration, which is what we've done here. Preservation simply stops any degradation that may have occurred to the firearm from continuing, keeping the firearm as original as possible. Whereas what we've done here is we've completely stripped down the firearm, filled in any pitting, and then recoated it with a ceramic finish that's going to last significantly longer. This firearm is gonna be able to be passed down from generation to generation, still function and never rust. Overall, I'm very satisfied and I think the customer will be too. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. I really appreciate it and it means a lot to me. If you like the videos and the content that we bring you, scroll your cursor over to that subscribe button right now and subscribe so that we can see you on the next one. If you want to watch more videos like what you just saw, we have plenty in our library and a couple to click on right here.